uh, at a global level and every other which way. If we, you know, just assume that, oh, it's infinite out and infinite in, and therefore it's all infinite, there are no rules. That's, that, that would be a tragic co-opting of the entire truth by a very small version of uh, understanding, a small kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, one more question and then let me look at my... No one has a watch anymore. You notice that? 826. We all have phones. I see that, Randy. Don't forget. Okay, I don't see that. Uh, so let me ask one more and then I'm going to give you a chance to start writing down some of your own questions on a card and, and submit them and we'll have them respond to some of your questions as well. So this is more of a practical question for the two of you. Uh, we've talked about, um, for those of us who are on a spiritual quest, I, mean, I think we are all kind of interested in that, what do you see for you? And, and uh, Michael, you talked a little bit about the notion of just letting, you know, continuing to let things go. What would be some practices that you would suggest from either a Jungian perspective or your own perspective that would help people begin to transition from third, second, to somehow a, a, an engagement of the first or an engagement of the, of the, I don't know how you describe it, Randy, maybe the symbols or the, um, that level. What kind of practices, if I went home tonight and said, I'm gonna try this on, what would that look like for me? Do you have any insight into that? Randy, you want to go first? Uh, collective unconscious probably would be a good word for that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the collective. If I wanted to feel like I was a part of the collective unconscious, what would be a good practice? Well, there are two, two practices in the Jungian sort of tradition. Yeah. And one is to tend your dreams. Tend, tend. tend your dreams. Tend your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. Listen to your dreams. That is the royal road to the unconscious. Oh, really? Yeah. The royal road to the, the royal unconscious? royal road to the unconscious. That sounds like a marketing strategy, but I get it. <laughs> yes. So tending to my, you're talking about not my my constructed dreams, you're talking about my dream states, like really, sleep dreams. dreams. at night, you know, when yeah. you wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, my wife and I have had some of our greatest conversations in the morning. Oh, I had a dream about, I had a dream about, and uh -huh. reflect, and we, we allow that larger, so that's when the filters are down, you know, and that that the spirit, if you will, can speak in a language that the critical analytical self is is not watching. Right. Yeah. So pay attention to that. That's very very important. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. And I mean that, that's the main one. And he used something called active imagination, which can also be very powerful, just to allow you. Uh, speaking of relating to Christian symbolism. Instead of buttoning down everything into this sort of factual, historical, but to, in a sense, kind of like Freud, but a different way, to free associate, to allow these symbols to bubble up, to speak to us and, and allow us to reflect on them and see, see what sort of associations and connections happen, because that's when wisdom can start to really speak to us. So I'd say those are two. two those are great. Do you get that? So, uh when you wake up, kind of attentiveness to dreams and then free association with some of the primary symbols. Well, dream journal would be great. Right. All right, I expect you all to start that. <laughs> and free association with things like some of the primary symbols of, of faith. All right, yeah, I, I think that uh, probably the most profound thing I learned on this path was when somebody said, just watch your thoughts. Watch your feelings. Observe what's really going on as opposed to becoming what's going on. So yeah. it's so easy for us to say, well, I am angry. Well, hi, angry, nice to meet you. No, anger is coming up in this experience. What is it that's watching that experience? That's Christ consciousness. That's collective unconscious. It, that's that's, that's the, the space between our thoughts, Dan. Yeah. The space between those feelings that we have and we can actually orient or reorient ourselves from that space, we are living a meditation. But so many uh, times you start hearing about meditation as being something that we, we do to calm down, or something <laughs> that we do to meditate on something. Well, I actually come from a, a tradition where it's not meditating on anything. It's actually watching your thoughts enough to where you no longer identify with them, so you can let go of them, so that they can be. I'm not trying to kill them. I'm not trying to do hand-to-hand -hand combat with your ego or anything. You're trying to watch your ego, okay? And see that it acts like the smartest and most obnoxious nine-year-old you've ever met. 
<laughs> and with that type of distance, what happens? Your relationship to your ego changes. Instead of something that you need to push aside, it's something that you can actually open your arms to just like you would a nine-year-old after their third grade play. You know, you begin to make friends deeply with what's going on in your interior. And every one of you can do that tonight before you go to bed. You don't have to wait. And what's more, no one's going to do it for you. One of the great things of the tradition that I come from is the teacher will point out where you need to go. You actually have to take the steps. No one's going to save you. You're only going to save yourself. And you save yourself by actually becoming and evolving from small self into this big self that still loves watching the Giants win baseball games. <laughs> and other stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're watching stuff. yourself watching the baseball game. You're watching yourself watching. Yeah. And, yeah. But instead of that being sounding like this weird dissociative space, <laughs> right? it's not. It's actually incredibly engaged. Yeah. You are actually participating from a place of peace. That's great. So some hopefully, I, I wanted to get to sort of some practical tools. Those are practical tools. We've documented them on YouTube, so you can go back and check them out. <laughs> All right. They, they've been wonderful. Um, now I'm going to ramp it up a bit. I'm going to ask you to write your questions or even comments or what about this on your card, and then bring those up to me, and I'll, we'll sort through them. And then you can also uh, warm up your glass of wine, and there's still a little bit of uh, food out there. I left a little bit for you. And uh, then come back, and we'll do a little bit of final Q&A with the papers for the next 15 minutes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.